This photo story has been prepared to teach the proper technique for the injection of insulin. The first part of the demonstration will be for those who use vials of insulin. The second part will cover insulin that comes in pen devices. Injection technique for both will be demonstrated at the end of this presentation. Before preparing your insulin dose, thoroughly wash your hands using soap and water. This should be done no matter what type of insulin product you have. Prior to withdrawing the insulin, inspect your vial. Be sure to check the expiration date as well as for any signs of insulin breakdown within the vial such as long streaks or clumps. If the vial is expired or the insulin's appearance looks different than it did when you first acquired the product, do not use it. Obtain a new vial as soon as possible. Once your insulin has been inspected, if you have a cloudy type of insulin, gently mix it by rolling it back and forth between your hands. Do not shake the insulin. If your insulin is clear, you do not need to do this. If using a new bottle of insulin, remove the colored, flat, plastic cap that is on the top of the vial. The rubber stopper should now be visible on the top of the vial. Clean the rubber stopper on top of the insulin vial using an alcohol pad. You should do this each time you use the insulin. The insulin vial is now ready for use. Safely remove the cover of the needle on the syringe. Take care not to let the needle touch any surface other than the vial of insulin or your skin where you will inject the insulin. Pull the plunger on the syringe back to the number corresponding to the desired units of the insulin to be given. For instance, if you are to inject 10 units of insulin, you would draw the plunger back so the end of the plunger is at the line corresponding to 10 units. Make sure that you are using a syringe specifically meant for insulin injection. Gently push the tip of the needle through the rubber stopper and push the air in the syringe into the vial of insulin by pushing down on the plunger. With the needle tip still in the vial of insulin, turn the insulin bottle and syringe upside down, holding the vial of insulin with one hand and the syringe in the other. This takes practice, but soon you will be able to manipulate the syringe and vial with little difficulty. Pull back on the plunger to get the desired dose of insulin to be given. The end of the plunger should be at the same mark as it was when you drew in the air. If air bubbles appear in the syringe, after you pull up the insulin, gently flick the syringe with your finger to make the bubbles rise to the top of the syringe and push the insulin back into the vial. Draw back on the plunger a second time to get the desired dose. Very tiny bubbles are not a concern. Pull the syringe out of the insulin vial and double check the dose withdrawn. Make sure that there are no large air bubbles present within the syringe and that the tip of the plunger is at the desired line for the correct dose of insulin needed. In addition to vials, you may receive your insulin in the form of a pen. Many types of insulin come in this type of administrative device. There are some differences among them, but they all basically work in the same manner. Pull the pen cap to remove it. Be sure to check your insulin for type and expiration date. Use an alcohol swab to wipe the rubber seal on the end of the cartridge holder. As with the insulin vials, some insulin available in pens needs to be mixed. Gently roll the pen 10 times and invert the pen 10 times if you have the cloudy type of insulin. Do not shake the pen. The needles that are to be attached to the pens come separately and must be attached to the pen prior to use. Pull the cap off the needle, then push the needle straight onto the pen through the rubber end. Screw the needle onto the pen until secure. Once the needle is secure, pull off the outer needle shield. Do not throw this away. The pen now needs to be primed. Dial up two units by turning the dosage knob on the top of the pen. Some pens require that you pull the knob out as you do this. Point the pen up and tap the cartridge to collect air at the top. You may need to flick the pen to get the bubbles to the top of the pen. Push the knob in until it stops and zero is seen in the window. The pen is now primed. If a little stream of insulin did not appear, repeat the priming steps again. 
Next, twist the end of the pen until your predetermined insulin dose is indicated by the number in the window. The pen is now ready for injection. After injection, use the outer needle shield to cover the needle, unscrew the capped needle and dispose of it as we will describe later in the injection technique section of this demonstration. This is a different type of pen, a reusable inlet pen. This pen device uses a dial, much like a kitchen timer, to set the dose and can deliver insulin in one unit increments. This is a delivery system specifically designed to suit the needs of insulin users with poor eyesight, reduced dexterity, and for those who found learning how to give injections difficult. This is a common device for insulins such as NPH insulin or an insulin mix of regular and NPH insulin called the 7030. With this device, an insulin cartridge is placed into the space on the left that is above the threaded end. First, pull the cover from the bottom of the device. Attach the needle to the threaded end using the steps followed with the previous pen. This pen is also primed in the same manner as was demonstrated with the previous pen. Once the pen is primed, turn the dial to the units you are to receive. If you turn the dial too far, you can simply turn it back to get to the right number. The last step is to insert the needle into the chosen injection site. Press the plunger located above the dial and wait until the dial reads zero. This takes about six seconds. Then remove it. After injection, use an outer needle shield to cover the needle, unscrew the cap needle, and dispose of the needle as described in the next section. When deciding where to inject your insulin, the optimal place is the abdominal region. In order to avoid the development of scar tissue, the ten-finger technique can be used to spread out the locations for each injection. Simply spread your hands across your stomach and rotate injection sites based on the location of the spaces between your ten fingers. Before injecting the insulin, clean the area of injection with an alcohol wipe or with soap and water. It is important to allow this region to dry before injecting your insulin dose. Pinch a large area of skin where you wish to give your insulin dose. Push the needle all the way into the skin at a 90 degree angle. If you are a very thin person or a child, the needle can be injected at a 45 degree angle. With the needle in the skin, slowly push the plunger all the way down and release the pinched skin after all the insulin has been injected. Pull the needle straight out of the skin. Do not rub the skin at the injection site. After the needle is withdrawn from the skin, safely dispose of the syringe into a pre-purchased container that is specially made to hold sharp medical waste, such as the one pictured here. If a pre-purchased sharps container is not available, you may use a strong, rigid plastic or metal container with a screw-on or tightly secured cap or lid, such as a laundry detergent bottle, milk jug, or empty coffee can. When the container is three-quarters of the way full, reinforce the cap or lid with heavy-duty duct tape. Mark clearly and noticeably on the outside of the container, do not recycle, and household sharps. You may place this container in your regular trash. This concludes the demonstration of proper insulin administration technique. If you have questions regarding the content of this presentation or you require additional information, please contact your local health care provider.